Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, and an ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, here we are after Thanksgiving. We all uh, survived. I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. This is December the 2nd. This is episode 24 of the Artist Friends Podcast, and my name is Clyde J. Kale. Hello, Diane. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hi, everyone. Hi, uh, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's start out. First of all, did you two have a nice Thanksgiving? Yeah, it was really nice. It was busy, but it was nice. <laughs> yeah, I had a nice Thanksgiving. It was it was really nice. Okay, good. All right. Um, the Rick one of the recommended videos was our friend Gary Vanerchek, and I. Uh, he says a lot of the same stuff. But in this particular talk that he was uh, giving, he mentioned a couple things that were uh, uh, different or I hadn't really heard before. And so we'll kind of talk about this. Uh, Diane, you want to start off? Uh, did you get a chance to watch the listen to the video? And Yeah, I mean, he was talking a little bit about um, how um, technology has changed things and how resistant a lot of people were to new technology as, it, as all these different things that they've been coming out, people have been resistant to it because they like things, you know, the way they are and they don't want to change. And so they, they kind of fight, you know, the new technology coming out, but you really need to um, stay up with everything because otherwise you're going to get lost. You, you'll just be so far behind. You won't be able to keep up. And it, it's, it is true. I mean, I, I can remember a lot of the things happening that, you know, people wanted to hang on to their BlackBerry phones when the iPhones and stuff came out. And, <laughs> and yeah. even the internet, like, you know, people before the internet came out, you know, people had like the yellow pages and, and stuff to find, you know, to look up things. And it seems almost ridiculous now, <laughs> but um, it, it was pretty, yep. a pretty foreign concept at the time. So it's, yeah. it's just I like the, I like the, the example he gave. He was on a uh, discussion panel. And, uh, he was actually, uh, voted down by the other panel members when he was discussing the yellow pages versus the worldwide internet, Yeah, how they were all, you know, saying, well, no, the yellow pages will never go away. And they had all these valid reasons for advertising in the yellow pages and everything. And he was trying to explain to them, no, those are going to disappear. 
in the future. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, he, I mean, the yellow page books used to be huge, yeah. you know, especially the big, where bigger you cities. Live. Yeah. They, they used to be really big and, and cause they had everybody's numbers in them, all your, all your personal numbers as well as all the um, yellow page. You know, yeah. I remember. Numbers. Yeah. When you're a child and you had, had went somewhere for supper, they used to put yeah, those sit on them. On the chair so you could get up to the level of the table, you know. And yeah. In Atlanta, you know, the books were pretty big. <laughs> you know, that reminds me, this is a little off topic, because you guys know, you know, I run my, my uh, old-time radio station, and I you know, listen to their old radio programs. Well, there was a song I came across. There was a song that uh, the guy says, you know, he's an expert. And it's a song about building outhouses. And <laughs> you, and he used to say, say, you know, that uh, he says that in, in the song, he has a line about the Sears catalog. And people oh, yeah. ask asking, well, how long does that catalog last? I said, well, when he, he said, you're okay. Till you, it lasts until you get to the harness section. That's about spring. <laughs> <laughs> Some of our listeners probably won't even know what the heck an outhouse is. <laughs> but the, the story, which you remind me of the book. Yeah, that's right. I remember when I was a kid. Yeah, you, they used the uh, uh, phone books usually for the, you know, phone books and yeah. catalogs, but the prop the kids up on the chair so you could get mm-hmm. high up to the table. Yeah, because yeah. they were like four or five inches thick. Yeah, <laughs> they were big. They were, especially that, the big city ones. used to have one for the white pages and one for the yellow yeah. pages, and they were that thick. So yeah. uh, depending on how big a child you were, you got one or two phone books. <laughs> <things. laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Incredible. The computer. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how many of our young listeners, you know, but it's like when Gary in his speech, you know, when he was starting to tell our story, he says, he says how many in here is under 30? And of course, you have to be right. And says, okay, kids, at one time, yeah. <laughs> he went in and told you the way he told the story. And then he said, I loved, I cracked up when he told the story. He said, one of the guys, he said, he's an older gentleman, he was 50 something. And he said, he was very polite and everything, but he said, he was serious. He said, I was telling, explaining how I was going to sell wine on the internet. And he said, now tell me, you mean you take oh, a bottle of wine, you go down in the basement and you got this tube, <laughs> you put it in the tube and you send it to the customer, right? <laughs> yeah, like, I remember like at the, saying uh, that. That was funny. It's like the tubes at the bank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't exactly work that way. <laughs> <laughs> But it's so how do you ship out? How do you ship it out through the internet? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> but that's true you know a lot of people they just they have a hard time wrapping their head around new things that yeah, are it was very hard to, when, they, when the computers and the internet first came out it was very hard to understand like how it all worked and how you know how it was going to replace things that you were so used to using that hadn't that had been around for forever mm-hmm I remember yes. some of the very first uh, Am- when Amazon started, you know, because they started out with just books, you know, books. Yeah. And I remember yeah. their, their commercial, seeing a commercial on TV, it shows two guys that are, uh, you know, like country folks, farmers, you know, and their their cars are, you know, trucks are parked next to each other. And, and one guy says to the other, says, you know what that crazy kid says? He's going to sell books on the Internet. How's he going to ship those books out? How are they going to get him across the wires? <laughs> it, was, it was a it was an early commercial for Amazon, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody got really, really used to that really quick because it's so convenient. You know, if the book, if if the books, you know, are out there, both for the most part, you can, you can, get them. I sold I sold books for a while on Amazon. Because they used to let everybody sell books on Amazon, and you didn't have to have like a special merchant's number or anything like that. You could just list your what is that on the back of the book that ISB number? Yeah, ISBN. Yeah. And you could just put that on, and and the book cover the the whole thing about the book would just pop up, and that's all you had to do. And then somebody would buy it from you, and you just shipped it out to them. So that was really cool. I got rid of a lot of old books that way. Yeah. <laughs> But like I was telling uh, Diane and Constance folks, uh, there is a reason why Amazon is the uh, number one retailer in the world. Um, in our previous podcast, we were talking about uh, walnut oil. 
and Diane had mentioned uh, the uh, M. Graham, you know, company that produces uh, walnut oil paints. So I had done a search on the internet and uh, found, you know, a starter set for a certain price. And I thought, oh, it's pretty expensive. So I thought, okay, I'll wait. I told myself, I'll wait till after the first year. Well, then Thanksgiving night, I get an email from Amazon saying, hey, are you still looking for oil paint? Check out our Black Friday sale. So I clicked on it, and oh, my God. Coming this Friday will be my oil paint set. It was <laughs> such a discount. It was incredible. So these guys, I mean, they are spot on, you know, and, and that's what Gary Vaynerchuk in his talk he says, that, yeah. he says, it doesn't make any difference what kind of business you are in. The internet is disruptive. The internet will destroy you if you don't get in the, into the game. Yeah. And it applies to artists too. Um, I will give you an example. I have been uh, associated with a, uh, an art organization. They're out of Switzerland and they put on shows with a combination of uh, uh, high technology digital. In other words, uh, they have these large uh, flat screen monitors and your art is displayed on there. And they also have actual physical paintings and physical works of art in the gallery. And it's a combination here. And because of them, I'm participating in Art Basel Week, this week starting today the day from the 2nd to the 8th of December and my art is going to be displayed on one of those large seven foot tall monitors and I was thinking about you know believe me five years ago probably even three years ago I would not have had this opportunity to in order to attend a major art show like Art Basel Miami you already spend a lot of money and unless you are a high-end artist, you don't get a chance to participate in that. And here I am. Oh, that does cost a lot of money to go to that. Here I am, this guy in from Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City, you know, uh, who is still an emerging artist <clears throat> and not, not established at all. And here I am. I'm My art is now going to be, during this week, at Art Basel, Miami. This is because of the Internet. And yeah, I had an entry fee I had to pay, but it wasn't prohibitive at all. It was very economical. And I was looking on their website and the company, they're called uh, Artbox Projects and they're, they're out of Switzerland. Um, they are going to, gonna, in March, going to hold a show in Barcelona. I'll probably participate. And then they haven't established the dates, but then they're going to have shows in Hong Kong and in London and then in Italy. I mean... <sighs> I'll in, probably end up participating in all of you. There is no way I could afford this. <laughs> but this is due to the internet. This is, this is another example of how the internet is very disruptive. And for their more traditional galleries, and unless they get into the game, I mean, we hear about it all the time. Galleries are shutting down or closing. And, you know, these folks... They're going, they're going to be around and I, and for a long time, I think, you know, by taking this more modern, you know, te technological uh, way. And, uh, uh, got anything? Well, I think, I think the galleries have to, are going to be forced. A lot of them don't want to, but they're going to be forced into, um, having a version on the internet, you know, not just having a, a brick and mortar store because that they're not going to be able to keep up with just that. Even well, the ones that have been in business are. for years and years, you know, yeah. they're, they're all having problems. So they really need to, you know, be to, to keep up with all the technology and the modern way of doing things. Yeah. Whether they want to do it or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They think that you're right. They think yeah. you're right. And the thing about it is now these guys, they've taken it one step further. You know, they've actually made a combination of uh, like a traditional gallery show with modern, you know, modern technology. And mm -hmm. they're in interesting thing, their internet presence isn't really that big. I mean, they don't, you know, but, uh, uh, of course they, you know, they're really great at posting pictures of, you know, the shows, you know, and, you know they've got 
excellent photographs. But, of yeah, but using the technology of having the TV, and you're basically, you know, making your like they they might have a store that's you know a certain number of square feet big. By using the the um, the sets, the television sets or you know screens, they can rotate hundreds and hundreds of paintings probably. Exactly. That's how. They, so they're. It's like they're expanding their space, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a lot like, more work. it's like having a, a warehouse full of, you know, and people don't have to walk. They can just stand there and look at them, you know, instead mm-hmm. of walking. Exactly. Because that's what they do. It's uh, my, uh, the arc, arc is, that's on the screen is a static. It's, it rotates. It's like a slideshow, you know, for like 30, 40 seconds and the next one pops up. That's how my art was. Uh, I was in their show. I was, because they, they have two physical galleries in Switzerland. And they're really, really small, but they have these screens everywhere, you know, throughout the gallery. Yeah, yeah. So that's they're expanding their space. In, in October, uh, when I first got involved and I was invited to participate, that's how I, I participated in their – I was in their physical gallery in uh, October for the entire month of October. We get a little bit off track here. Um, one thing that he says – continue. I've heard him say this before, and he always says this, you know, that uh, if – regards to what business you're in, if you are not actively communicating, and, and that's what he emphasized, using social media and everything is, and, and podcasting and written and visual and audio, this is communication with your customers. Because he said the customers don't care that that bookstore has been in business for 40 years. If they can get a book, the book they want for eight dollars cheaper, they're going to go and get it. He said we have to become customer focused, and and uh, if you are not actively on the internet and doing these things, pursuing this uh, this activity, then you're going to disappear in the future. You know, and and uh, he used the example of like. Now with the uh, with the voice, you know, with the uh, the Amazon Echo and uh, the Google Home, you know, he said in ten years from now or sooner, you know, they're going if the people he was talking to were uh, mortgage brokers, you know, who in the real estate business, he says, hey, I need a, I, you know, Alexa, I need a mortgage, and anybody would pop up whoever has been on there the most. But if you've been actively posting there, then, you know, Hey, I need, uh, I need a mortgage from Jane Houseman, whatever, you know, I just made up the name, you know, he said, you're come up. It's the same true. It's the same way for artists, folks, you know, for some of our artist listeners, you know, if you're, if you're not actively posting, not just Instagram, not just LinkedIn, not just Facebook or any of the others, but actively, uh, frequently posting, getting the word out there, you're going to disappear, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we've seen it ourselves just in the short time we've been doing this. We can see how much uh, much of a difference it makes when you're posting all the time. Mm-hmm. versus when you're not it, things just drop right off when you right. get busy with life or whatever and you you neglect your social media and stuff and yeah all the all the things just drop down really quick mm-hmm. so, and it doesn't have to be you know posting that are are your industry pacific cat videos Funny video. There's so many funny videos. Uh, we did mention the cat, the cat videos, <laughs> <laughs> but I, they do draw a lot of attention. People look at them, and then they look around, you know, the, around the, the outside of the thing, and find out where it came from to see and stuff. So, and then find your information. So, another thing that he said that I've he's probably said it before, but for some reason it rang a bell with me. He made a comment. He says, I don't have a romance with social media. I'm not oh, romantic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not romantic about Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. They could all go away tomorrow. And I wouldn't care. And I was like, what? 
when not, that's all he talks about, you know, is, is <laughs> pushing it. He said, their communication to us, because it's something else, something better will probably replace them. Said, yeah. It's a tool. Don't get involved. Said, too many people will say, you know, well, I don't post on Facebook because there's too many, you know, people just posting pictures on, or Instagram posting pictures of themselves, you know, and it's not real. So what? It's communication. It's a communication yeah. tool. You guys got any thoughts about that? You want to? Yeah, I mean, there's always new ones coming out. Um, you know, you don't know if they're going to pan out or not. I mean, some of them do and some of them don't. And by next year, you've forgotten what the name of them is because they didn't last. But you, you never know. I mean, it might just take off. And so you kind of have to keep your ears open and you know on, be on the lookout for stuff like that because mm -hmm. they could take over and you'd be left in the dust if you don't yes you know, keep on keep an eye on it it's just the way it is you know okay um i've been chattering too much boy I, <laughs> <laughs> have uh, have we got any any kind of announcements or anything diane i know you got something you got to share with us come on i saw <laughs> I saw your um, posting. Yeah, I had another one of my paintings um, was picked as a favorite fifteen percent for October in the in the bold brush competition. So that was kind of cool. That's right. been I think four or five months in a row now. And now this last month, November, I forgot to enter. <laughs> I just got busy with other stuff and I forgot to enter. So I'm gonna miss one, but <laughs> I just need to win it now. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. would be great. A absolutely, you know. But, but it's nice, you know, I mean, there's thousands of paintings being, you know, shown in that. So it's kind of cool when you get picked for that. Yeah, because there know. are a lot of artists. I mean, how many artists do they have on there? I don't know. There's thousands. It's, thousands. It's, a, it's a lot. I know there's thousands of paintings that get submitted every month. So yeah. to get picked into the top. 15% is pretty, it's a pretty small amount of paintings in comparison. I think I'm going to, as a new year thing, is get involved and get on FASO um, because they're having, they're having a December special, so, <laughs> but, the, you know, they might as well take advantage of it, you know, so. Yep. Um, well, that's like, yeah, you know, I also participated, yeah, you know, and, and, uh, the fast so you can they have for uh you can submit a uh, one one painting each month uh free without you know any kind of a fee or membership you know so mm -hmm. so with oh, okay. yeah with it with a membership i think i think you can depend on your level it's either two or three you can you know submit yeah it depends on what level you um sign up for you know but, but. Uh, i you i use the you know I tried to make it ever since August, every month I've submitted something and, uh, okay. Hey, if I win, <laughs> but what I do is when I first looked at oh, all of the wonderful work, artwork, I, and the first thought was my mind was, I'm not good enough, you know? <laughs> and then I started, you know, I watched the St Stephen Bauman video when he talked about entering contests and he said, use it as, a way to improve your art, you know, uh, mm -hmm. work on specific works of art for these contests. So I started doing it and not only fast, I've entered in other contests and I won a special recognition award for the month of December for the, um, uh, nature animals. My, one of my images of a uh, Buffalo, American Buffalo. So, he said, if you win something, like in your case, Diane, you have top 15%. That's, that's icing, you know, that's a, uh, yeah, that's more of a motivation. And that's where, I, you know, I look at it from, from a point of view of, we've talked about this before, I think, you know, I've, uh, it's a way for me to concentrate and improve, improve my art. You know? I hope I, so far, this is, this is, um, what, uh, let's see, one, two, yeah. Two awards, no, three, three awards now for special recognition. That's like the top 15%. It's bottom, you know, it's the bottom of the barrel. 
it would great, be great to win honorable mention or even win, but <laughs> oh well. <laughs> yeah. Where the first time's coming. <laughs> yeah. You just have to keep entering them, Diane. Yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't win if you don't enter. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. The the artists oh, the competition is stiff. I right, so you, mm -hmm. you can't you can't be afraid, but you just gotta jump in. Jump in with both feet, you know, and, and the water's warm, folks. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't know until you try. I mean, you might. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you don't. You never know what the judges are going to pick, and you don't. You know, you really don't know. You know, what things will strike their fancy or whatever. <laughs> you know, every month mm -hmm. they have different people, so it's. Yeah, you know, all these all these contests, they all have different. You know, different jury. Yeah, the judges are always different, so it's. And that's good. Uh, the uh, you know the jury, you know, to pick a good you know, jury. Well, that's like the, the art box people. Okay, they also have it's a jury contest. What they do is they will select the uh, the hundred fin a uh, hundred finalists, which will have a little bit of extra special display. Uh, they display their artwork on the Artsy website and on some of their other sites. And within the show, they will uh, have the one hundred finalists uh, displayed on smaller monitors throughout the gallery. Out of the 100 finalists, they will pick 10 finalists, and they will physically pay for their artwork to be shipped to the gallery and, and have your artwork displayed there. And the finalists, the top, the top guy, okay, the top finalists, will uh, be given a, 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 a representation contract. They will actually represent you know that artist so so it's jury you know contest but uh the fact that i'm my art is being displayed in galleries and shows around the world now just i never i believe me <laughs> I, I never would have thought that would happen yeah <laughs> well it's exciting <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's exciting it, this is not unique, folks. Any artist can do this. And the beautiful thing about all of these these contests and the these contests that are on the internet and, and it it's your artwork. They don't care who you know. They don't care what kind of education you had. They don't care if you're a woman or a man or whatever. It's your artwork. And isn't that what as artists, what we want, we want our artwork to be accepted and to be appreciated. And that's, that's, that's what thrills me. Yeah. This is, a, mm -hmm. and, and this, this is because of the internet. Somebody's dog barking. Is that one of your dogs? That? Yeah. That's my Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have that's the door right. closed, but. He hears, yeah. oh, he hears us talking. He hears all these strange voices. Yeah. <laughs> No, somebody probably, just came home, so the dog is probably saying, "Diane, you're in there by yourself. Who are you talking to?" <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. yeah. This, this this is a this is a home you know homemade. So hey, you know we have all a little glitches here. All right, uh, do we have anything else we want to discuss? I think we've uh, we've chatted away enough here. You know, I keep. Preaching about the the getting on the internet. Oh, my notes. You know, yeah. Other oh, than he's, you know, talking about building his brand, but I think you build a brand by when you're doing your postings and stuff. Eventually, that's part of your brand. Is is you know, you figure that out as you as you post a lot in all the places where you like to post. The, Absolutely, the brand, branding thing will come about by doing that. Now we're coming up near the end of the year, so I'm not going to ask for it now. But I'm putting the putting the word out. Be thinking about your uh, your your uh, goals and task for 2020. Just kind of be thinking about it, you know. Yeah. We'll probably wait. I'm, try I'm trying to be more organized, so I have I have a schedule. <laughs> 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 Wow. I'm still working on filling it in, but I am trying to. <laughs> it's an ongoing process. 
<laughs> so you got a blank. You say you got a piece of paper. Say, okay, Tuesday. Okay, what am I going to do Tuesday? Wednesday. Is that is that kind of what you? <laughs> sort of. Yeah, I have. Well, you guys know that I, I have. Accomplish. I have this thing. I always use this. It's always sitting over here. Yeah, open for for you your listeners, Constance just held. She held up a. Uh, uh, what was it my like my date book? <laughs> yeah, date book. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, it's yeah. it's. What do you call these things? They're called a daily planner. Yeah, daily yeah. planner. That was it. Yeah. 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 And I, I put everything I need to do in here. So, yeah. So, yeah. Well, you have to do stuff to keep yourself organized. Otherwise, mm-hmm. it gets all, <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a business. So, you have to stay on top of it. And that's yeah. the only way I know to do it is to have, I mean, I if I try to use the phone or the computer or something, I guess I'm not that great. That, But it, when it's sitting over here staring me in the face, you know, and I don't have to look up, look for it on the machine or something, then I can see, oh, yeah, I need to do this and this and this today. So, Well, believe yeah. it or not, I'm all, you would think, I mean, I'm I'm all, you know, high tech, Mr. Mr. Tech, whatever. <laughs> I still use pencil and paper to, to write notes down, mm-hmm. make schedules. And I, I you know, and I, I like I, I like post-its. <laughs> All colors of post-its. Oh, I, used to, I used to be posting that crazy, but I've gotten out of that habit. You know, years ago I would, and I ha- I used to stick them on my monitor where you almost couldn't see anything. <laughs> it would be all over the monitor. <laughs> I, that was a few I got one here and I got one. Ago, yeah. I got one here. <laughs> you know, that's a few years ago, but I, I don't do that anymore. But I uh, I still I write things down, you know, and it, it when you got it physically in front of you there. It's, yeah. It's, it's really cool. pretty much whatever works for you. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you really do need to have something that can consist right. in something that you can really track what you're doing. So yep. I'm trying to, that's, that's what my goal is for next year, trying to be more consistent about that and really have, you know, more lists and that I can just check off and, you know, yeah. the things that I want to, my goals that I want to accomplish in the year, broken down in steps and. Well, in a, in a, yeah. in, a, in one of our episodes near the, you know, near the end, end of the, uh, end of the month here, we'll, uh, we'll have to really sit down and, verbally make commitments mm-hmm. i don't know if we'll keep them but we'll verbally make them <laughs> <laughs> and maybe well, we'll do our best <laughs> maybe, some our, maybe some of our listeners will hold us to the task hold our feet to the fire you know they're, they're <laughs> writing emails and, hey you said in episode so and so oh yeah that's right didn't i <laughs> Well, we've, we've been pretty good about doing that like yeah you know, we have. getting those things checked off so it's pretty good Yep. Good way of doing it. Yeah, we keep each other motivated, so that's a good thing. Yep, that's what this is all all about. Yeah. Okay, I think that's going to be it. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Constance, for joining me. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in. This is Clyde J.K.L., and you've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 24 for December the 2nd. And good night, everybody, and have a very creative week. Bye-bye. Good night, Diane. Good night, Constance. Good night, good night Clyde. Good night, Constance. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night, good night Clyde. Good night, Diane. <laughs> Bye-bye, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.